Hey there, I'm Helper Wesley, and in this video, we'll be using some commonly used expressions. In the intro Expressions Builder tutorial, we showed you how to search for expressions that you might want to use, but without knowing what your options are, you wouldn't know what to search. So I've made this game, and I'm going to go through the events sheet and pick out expressions that you'll find useful. To begin with, in this game, when you start the game, you get to pick from three upgrades. And to create those upgrades, we use the create object action, and then use the expression for the X and Y position of the object. In this case being the room floor. So to get the X position of an object, you can click on the expression builder and search for it, or you can just type it in. If you type in a little bit of the name, the autocomplete will show you the options, and then you just click on it. And if we want to get the X position, we just type in X and click on that. And now we have the X and the Y position of the floor. And then to get that position minus a few pixels over, we just type in minus 64 in the X expression. And if we go to the object, you'll see that I've moved the origin point to the center of the object. So all of the events calling for the X and Y position of this object will pick that point. So when we start the game, we get one in the middle, one to the left and one to the right. And then to randomize those upgrades, we've selected change the animation for the upgrade object and then set it to random in range zero to four because there are five different possible animations for this object. So if we type in random, we'll see our options. The first option being random number, which will pick an integer between zero and whatever the number is you put in there. The next being random float, which will do the same thing, but include decimal numbers between zero and whatever the number is. And then random float in range, which is a number to a number, and then picking anything in between. And then random in range, which is a number to a number, but it will only pick integers. And then finally, random with step, which is your minimum and maximum, and then however big the step is. But in this case, just like randomizing objects in the changing animations video, we can randomize the upgrades whenever the game starts. Another commonly used expression is the distance between two positions. If we use the condition compare two numbers and then type in distance between two positions, the X position of the camera, the Y position of the camera, and then the X position of the room we're going to, and the Y position of the room we're going to, and set it to check if it's greater than 5, then we can use this condition to make the character move during the transition of the camera between rooms until the camera gets within 5 pixels. Next is how to round numbers. So in this game, every time you go into a room, the danger level goes up by 0.5. But 0.5 is a messy number. So instead, I round that down to get a nicer number to use for other things later in the game. Floor will take whatever's in the brackets and round that down to the nearest integer. Seal will round it up. Rounding works as you would expect it to. So if it's five and above, it will round up. If it's below five, it will round down. Now, the X and Y position of a point. So on the character, there's a point called Gunspot. And if we go down to the events, we'll find one for positioning the gun on the character at the gun spot. Now to make this expression, we just type in the object's name, and then type in point, and then put in quotation marks to kick off the autocomplete, and then we can select the point we want to use. And that's it. Next would be the angle towards position. So when you fire the gun in this game, you experience some recoil, and that works by checking the angle towards the position of the mouse compared to the player. So for this one, we would type in the object's name, select angle to position, and then for the number one and two, it's just the mouse X position and the mouse Y position. And I like to put everything in brackets. And then we add 180 so that the angle is reversed. And then during this timer, we apply an instant force to the object using that angle. And then for knockback on the ghost when the ghost object gets hit, we do something similar. We just check the angle of the bullet 
instead of the angle towards the mouse. And so to do that, we just type in bullet and then angle. And that's it. It's actually really easy to find the thing that you need using this. So I could type in Z and get the Z order, angle and get the angle, center and get the center point of that object, opacity and get the opacity of that object, and so on and so on. But in this case, we're using the angle to apply a force during the knockback timer. Hopefully knowing all these expressions will help you in your future games. As always, comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorial you want to see next. Maybe we'll add it to the pile. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help. <laughs>